Hello all and welcome to our week 14 mini lecture, which is on chapter 7, Effectively Negotiating and Resolving Conflict Related to Issues of Diversity. Uh, first off, I wanted to start off with our objectives. Our first objective is to articulate the importance of cultural diversity. Our second objective is to discuss why cultural differences may lead to conflict between families and programs. Our third objective is to explain how to develop relationships with families that are inclusive and supportive. Our fourth objective is to outline how to create practices and policies that respond to differences respectfully, keyword there. And our fifth objective is to describe three steps to deal with cultural differences in early childhood education programs. So we're gonna begin our discussion by talking about conflict. When working in an early childhood education setting with children, family, and coworkers from varying backgrounds, conflict is inevitable. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I have experience conflict in the workplace due to differences in backgrounds, beliefs, and upbringings. However, if managed correctly, conflict can be a learning and growing experience for all. We need to honor, learn, and explore not only other cultures, cultures different than ours, but acknowledge how our own beliefs play a role in our professional caretaking roles. As professionals, it is imperative that we build relationships with families and create a classroom of inclusiveness that celebrates diversity. That is what this whole course is about, is creating inclusive classrooms that celebrate diversity. Some conflict in the classroom can be prevented when we build relationships with families based on a willingness to listen and to hear about who they are and what they want for their children, because what they want for their children can vary from culture to culture. So it is up to us as caretakers to truly listen to that and to help, what's the word, to help bridge that from, bridge that connection essentially from home to school. We can also start conversations that will help us understand where families are coming from and how we can effectively and respectfully engage and communicate with them. Questions to ask might include, what are some ways staff can learn more about your perspectives and needs? Another question is, how would you like to communicate with and partner with staff? Could also ask parents to describe what school was like in their country of origin or when they were growing up and things like that. If uh, a family has immigrated or refugees, or I mean, we're all growing up in different times, so it would be nice to know what school was like when they were in school. Cultural differences can lead to conflicts. It happens. For example, people may disagree on practices for handling a baby, responding to crying, feeding, sleeping, mostly anything you can think of. The Program for Infant Toddler Caregivers, the PITC, has outlined three steps in their training uh, dealing with, it's called dealing with differences. And those three steps are acknowledge, ask, and adapt. That can be used in early childhood programs that serve children of all ages. So step one is acknowledge. What does this mean? So how does the caregiver recognize the need for communication with the family? How does the caregiver's attitude convey sincere interest and a sincere response? to questions that may be asked, things like that. What can the caregiver say to the family to communicate awareness that there is a problem that they need to solve together? I invite you to take time to think about how you feel about this issue and to get clarity on the reasons behind your feelings. It's important to listen to other people's concerns. And if you bring up a concern, do it respectfully with an attitude of wanting to understand the issue instead of just simply attacking. The second step is to ask, what questions can the caregiver ask the families to get information that will help him or her understand 
more precisely the family's point of view. It's data gathering, if you will, and trying to get the real sources of conflict or misunderstanding for the family, the child, or you. For this, I recommend to ask questions that seek to clarify. Pay attention to verbal and nonverbal responses and restate what you think is being said, taking the time to be sure that you are meaning the same thing in the language that you are using as they are meaning and just making sure that everybody is understanding each other. Our third and final step is to adapt. So how does the caregiver work with the family to define the issues and boundaries of the problem? Does the caregiver seek common ground as the basis for negotiation? Or how does the caregiver open up a negotiation with the family about what to do? Once the issues have been defined, seek out the common ground by stating your areas of greatest importance to each other. Listen carefully for areas of common agreement. Negotiate around the areas of important agreement and boundaries. Come to a resolution that addresses the real and major issue. And sometimes it's okay to agree to disagree. That's a wrap. Conflicts related to diversity are inevitable and should not be seen or approached in a negative way, but rather with the goal of partnering together to create the best environment for the child to thrive under your care and in the care at home. And the process of partnering takes time, it takes mutual understanding and respect for each other, and sometimes it can be uncomfortable. We know that being respectful of differences is valuable in an early learning setting. As indicated, these differences can lead to conflicts between families, early childhood professionals, and the program their child is enrolled in. With strong relationships, some of that conflict can be prevented. Early childhood educators can be reflective when disagreements over practices and policies occur, and they can use the three steps, the acknowledge, ask, adapt, Sorry, I my brain just totally stopped thinking. <laughs> okay. Uh, educators such as yourself can use that acknowledge, ask, adapt training to help mitigate the conflict respectfully and to come to a conclusion and agreement. I hope everyone has a fabulous week. You guys are almost there. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, just wanna chat about our final or anything like that. Um, I am here to support you. Please use me as a tool for your success. All right, I hope everyone has a fabulous day and I will see everyone next week.